Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about lesson one from module D. Um, this is unit one, so I'm on page four and five right now. We're going to talk about the fossil record, kind of the history um, of some of the life on earth, how we know life existed on earth, and how some fossils form and what we learned from those fossils. So if we look at our first picture here, kind of our, our uh, phenomenon for the lesson, if we see a skeleton here, okay, this is a fossil skeleton of a whale that was found. And based on the skeleton, an artist rendition, um, an artist was able to get this rendition, okay, of what that whale may have looked like. And so if we look at the question, what observations and inferences from fossils might have been used to build the computer model? Well, we find that scientists may have, for, may have found the whale had a long body, small back limbs, um, they may have concluded that the animal swam rather than walked. If it doesn't have legs, you can probably think that it walked. And they could uh, look at the type of rock it was found in. And they can maybe tell how, a little bit how old it was just by the type of rock it was in. Now, if you look at this whale, it's a little bit different than the whale that we have, the whales we have today. It has the front fins that are kind of like legs, but this one actually has back ones too, back fins. Whales today don't have these back fins. Um, these back legs. It's actually believed that whales, who actually were animals at one time, walked on land. But uh, through uh, millions of years of evolution, they actually lost those hind legs. Actually, the bones for those hind legs are still found in whales. They're just on the inside. You can't see them. <clears throat> so if we look at it, what similarities and differences uh, do you observe between fossil remains of the computer model and the whale? Well, if we look at that, the computer model of the whale shows how the whole whale may have looked like when it was alive and it shows most of its body but the fossils only show the skeletal remains basically the hard parts any soft tissues don't really form fossils soft tissues don't form fossils so there's organisms that are only made of soft tissues and they will actually never form a fossil because soft tissues just can't they decompose too quickly in the way fossils form they can't form fossils and so we don't ever actually see fossilized organisms um, that just consist of soft tissues, things like jellyfish, things like that. We won't ever find a fossil of a jellyfish. Okay, if we go to the next page, what is a fossil? What it actually is? How does a fossil form? <clears throat> okay, so like for this whale, how does the fossil form? Well, we have a whale, okay? We have a whale that has died, okay? It goes to the bottom of the sea ocean that it's living in, all right? The scavengers may eat the soft tissues. They may eat the soft tissues off of that whale. Uh, and then what's left is the skeleton. Okay, but we, the skeleton needs to be buried somehow. So basically what happens is somehow a, a disturbance in the sea, before the skeletal system decomposes, it actually gets buried. So more sediments bury the skeleton. And then layers of sediments build up and build up, and over time, those sediments actually can turn into rock. And then through different the geological processes on Earth, you can get to where that is no longer underwater but above water and we can actually then find every once in a while those skeletal remains which is what happened to that whale in the picture and so if we look at the uh, the process of fossilization in that diagram of the conditions here which conditions might prevent an organism from being preserved well if it was trapped in sea or if it was trapped in tree sap it would actually be preserved that's called an amber fossil and we're going to look at that here in just a second uh, but if it was eaten or decomposed, you're not going to see a fossil of that because there's nothing to fossilize. There's nothing there to become a fossil. Um, if it was dissolved by water, again, it would disappear completely. We would never see that. But if it was buried by sediments, that prevents things from eating it. It prevents it from decomposing further, and they can actually have a chance to form a fossil. But fossils are actually pretty rare. They're really rare for form. Not everything forms a fossil. Less than 1% of all uh, the species that have ever lived have been fossilized. <clears throat> That's very few that have been fossilized, and most organisms that die will never become a fossil. Okay, they would never become a fossil. So fossils are very rare to find. They are, they are, they're actually very rare to find. And depending on what area you're in, you can find different types of fossils. We have fossils here in Kansas, right here, and I'm going to show you a fossil from around this area here in just a little bit. But we have different types of fossils here. So we have uh, per per mineralized fossils, things like uh, this is a pretty famous fossil here <clears throat> and we're going to talk about this one here in a little bit um, in the coming days but this is one that's kind of a hybrid between a dinosaur and a bird you can actually see if you look really carefully feathers 
the pattern of feathers that actually come off of this. So feathers got imprinted on there. You can have carbonized fossils. Okay, and we're going to show you some of those here later too. Uh, amber fossils, so tree sap. So trees have a sap, a really sticky substance, almost like honey. It's actually thicker than honey. But if sometimes insects or leaves or th things like that will get trapped into that tree sap. And over time it hardens into almost like a solid kind of clear looking rock. And you can have those insects actually get trapped inside. And that's called an amber fossil. If you ever watched the first Jurassic Park movie, they showed this amber fossil where they had a mosquito that had, had got trapped in the amber. So the mosquito had went to a dinosaur, sucked some blood from a dinosaur, then went to a tree, landed in that amber, and got fossilized in there. And so that they, in the movie, they took that blood from the mosquito and they were able to recreate a dinosaur. In real life, that would not happen because over the millions of years, the DNA in that blood would have decomposed to the point where you could not have made a clone like they did in that movie. <clears throat> okay, so you have cast and mold fossils. Um, these are organisms, tissues decomposed, but the impressions are left. The impressions are left there. And so that's what cast and mold fossils are. You can have tar pit fossils. Tar pit fossils are where uh, you have an area where sticky, thick liquid, it's called asphalt, seeps up from the Earth's surface. Um, and so things can get trapped in that sticky substance and they can become fossilized. And you can have frozen remains. You can actually have frozen remains as part of fossils. And so some frozen remains are actually things like mammoths. We have found entirely frozen mammoths. Um, you can see those mammoths there. You, we can find those mammoths. And actually there's a group of scientists that are working on trying to find a mammoth like this. We found several frozen mammoths like this that if we could find a cell from that mammoth that has been frozen, it's been kept cold enough for uh, long periods of time and it's never thawed out, the hope is actually maybe that you could maybe try to bring a mammoth back to life, which would be kind of neat. So with a process of kind of kind of like cloning, but with a part of with elephants living today, we could maybe even create a mammoth again, make mammoths so they could walk the earth again, which would be kind of neat. So if we observe the trace fossils and uh, permineralized fossils that are over here in this picture, so I'm on page 8 now, so if we look at these trace fossils and these permineralized fossils, what might scientists be able to collect from each type of fossils? Well, trace fossils could help scientists determine the activity of an organism, so these are like footprints. We can see these footprints and see that, um, what was happening there. Um, we could. So they could see the activity of an organism, whether it was resting or playing or eating or even walking or running. Now these permineralized fossils can help show the body parts of organisms and determine some of the unique features. So like if we look at this fossil right here, we can see that it had some unique features like even feathers that are coming off of it. Okay, so we can see that that's maybe kind of one of the first birds, the first birds that we think of a bird. That might be one of the first birds that we can kind of think about and that's this was maybe one of them right here. Okay, so um, fossils are found all over. So at the one of a pretty famous area, one is called the Morrison found, the Morrison Formation. Okay, it's an area that kind of runs over the a mountainous area, the kind of the Rockies of the United States area, um, a little bit even into Kansas, the northwest part of Kansas even. Um, and what we can see here is that there's in this area there's just a lot of fossils. Okay, we can find a lot of fossils here. We can find things, everything from dinosaurs to uh, sea creatures in this in this area. Um, sometimes they're very well preserved, like this one right here. Or sometimes they're kind of scattered pieces, like this picture right here. But if we look at the question here, does the high concentration of fossils in the Morrison Formation mean that more organisms lived here 150 million years ago? That MYA stands for million years ago compared to other parts of the country and we explain so no it doesn't really mean that more live there it just means the high concentration of fossils in this area it just means that the conditions for fossil formation were better there than they were probably elsewhere in the in other parts of of the world or in the United States in this case okay so it doesn't mean that there's more it just means that the it was more likely to form there the conditions were better to form fossils there and you got to remember there's probably some organisms that lived here during this time. If they had, if they had soft body tissues, you're not going to see those fossils. So if it was just a soft-bodied organism, we're not going to see those fossils for those organisms. They decompose too quickly. We would never, we wouldn't see those fossils. Okay, we're actually going to skip page nine here. This is a 
hands-on lab. We're not going to do this lab right now, so we're going to skip page nine. We're going to page ten. Okay, so if we the first the top of page ten here, this is actually just the finishing up from the lab, so we don't need to do this part right here. But we're going to look right here, number six. Okay, from the evidence notebook. Now remember, our evidence notebook is kind of referring back to that first page of with the whale picture. So when we talk about the evidence notebook, it's referring back to these this page here with the picture of the whale and the skeleton, that artist rendition there. <clears throat> so if we look here, the fossil shown at the beginning of the lesson is from an extinct whale. Under what environmental conditions did that fossil probably form? And what can be learned from that type of fossil? And we want to record our evidence here. So this fossil probably formed from the sediment in a body of water. The fossil shows that the area it was formed in used to be underwater. And so things change on Earth. So in, act, in, act, in fact, most of the area of Kansas, if we go back several million years ago, was actually an inland sea. It was actually all underwater. Kansas was entirely underwater, which is we have, which is why we have a lot of limestone. Limestone is a process that, that only forms from the, the uh, remains of aquatic organisms. And so it was actually all, Kansas was actually all underwater. Okay, and so if we look at the analyzing the conditions for fossilization here, what conditions most likely existed at the location where the fossilized organisms once lived? And so if we look at this picture, what do we see? We see a lot of marine fossils. We see scallops, we see oysters. Um, we see a lot of those marine fossils. And so we can choose the everything that we can know. So we know that there are many hard-bodied organisms that live there. We know that sediments quickly cover the dead organisms, hiding them from scavengers. And which fossil record would most likely show more diversity, a land living organisms or marine organisms? And the answer is, it's just marine organisms are because they're just more likely to be fossilized. There's a much higher chance that they're going to get covered with sediment. Um, you're going to have a greater variety of them being preserved. You have a lot of hard bodied fossil or aquatic organisms. And so it's just marine organisms are much more common than terrestrial organisms, just because it's just easier to form those fossils. Okay? And as an example, this rock right here actually came from nearby. It was actually I got this rock out by Tuttle Creek. Okay, and this is has a lot of fossilized organisms, much like the one that was just in that picture. Okay, and so we can actually see some different pieces of uh, some clams, some some hard shells right here. We can see a little bit of coral even right in here. So little dots. It's kind of hard to see on the camera there, but those are coral. Um, we can see some other aquatic organisms. We can see plants and animals in this. Um, there's a shell right here. There's a shell that you can see right there. That's just a that's a shell there. We can see different pieces. And so fossils are very common here in here in Kansas. And so in our area, we get a lot of these types of fossils here around Manhattan. We're going to find a lot of these type of fossils, so marine aquatic organisms, because again, this whole area, Kansas, was once under a giant inland sea where we had lots of these different types of fossils. All right, guys, so this is the end of the Exploration 1. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you'll work on the Exploration 2. Um, like always, if you have any questions, just make sure and ask your teacher, okay? Thanks, guys.